What's up, guys? I'm back today. I'm going to be reacting to another JKX. Uh, you guys seem to like them, so I will keep doing them. This one, to me, it probably will get a little dicey. I don't think so. I would never would think it would, but I guess this should be under us. Could I do that today? This was really about what happens when you go uh on a spring break or you're out with your homie and the dude takes one for the team that's what it was it was like uh hopping on the grenade they say uh the guy's hooking up with the one you know uh hottie and the other uh guy gets the one that's uh uh not as hottie can you say that i was the grenade now it happens all the time your friend meets a cute girl who's got a cute friend for you right yeah it's perfect but what do you do when you find that her friend is a guy? Oh, boy. All right. So, uh, well, you know, um, a lot of people wouldn't um, even uh, attempt to react to this today. But since I did it, I created it. I uh, helped write it. I signed off on it. I stand behind it. What's the, what's the premise here? The premise is what happens when a guy is with is boy because you know that's like bro culture and he's hooking up with a hottie and his friend has to take the not so hottie so the setup really sounds different than it is it's only later we find out um that he may be a different gender i don't even know if you can talk about that today check out Kali, a hot and sassy co-ed looking for that special somebody or actually any and tonight, she's in love. Okay, first of all, my I made sure that the, we had a thing on it in my package. This was my actual package, but they gave me a nice, like, bikini banana hammock. So it'd stick out through the mini skirt. I'm laughing because I don't know how it's going to come out, but okay. We have to talk about it. Can I get you some uh, Just ice water. So just to let you know, there's a little side note. I always have trivia in these things. I've gotten so many people involved in these. The young man there was the guy we did the prank on. His boy, who was a bro from his frat or whatever in Florida, ended up coming to Hollywood and becoming an executive assistant. Kenneth, Kenny Ortega's right hand right there. I don't know if he still works for Kenny, but Kenny Ortega, the director of many things from This Is It to High School Musical. This kid that we pranked eventually became, he was like a co-producer of High School Musical and all these different things. There you go. Okay. Who did you meet? Oh, I just met her on the beach today. Did you get leather? Yeah. Real good looking? Yeah, just, just wait. Just so look, you met a girl on the beach. This is how you did it. You would meet on the beach or Trader Joe's. You didn't meet on apps. And spring break, so it's like, yo, I'm, I'm, me and my buddy are gonna go out and have a, a drink. You wanna come meet us? Hi. I mean, I'm trusted. It was a big surprise. It was cool. Right. Hey, you. Hey. How are you? All right. So it's Juliana, this actress is so good. She was so funny, so talented, so smart, so sexy. I, I never talk to her anymore. I don't know what happened to her. I think she was also very, I think acting was beneath her because I think she came from a very well-to-do family and she had like pedigree. She had like class and dignity. I think Hollywood, I don't know. She could have give two shits about Hollywood. I don't know where she's at. She came in, she auditioned, she murdered it. We hired her on the spot as she became a regular on the show. Like if I was building a, a whole cast of characters of like players, she would have been my number one. And she had so many traits and you could put her in any situation and she was just an animal like she was not scared of anything i think she had a boyfriend she was got married i think she was like more into like being a normal person i don't know where you are julie if you are hi hi <laughs> i look like <laughs> the thing is, i look like here's what i want to say before you get mad First of all, I look a lot like my some of my sisters. So second of all, and I kind of sound like my cousin Patine. That's how I was talking like her. I always want to act and play different characters. And 
doing this show, we'll deep dive on some of this stuff. I, my whole job in the show is to make you believe that I'm this character. So this is why I think it's an underrated show and it's bullshit. I'll go into a whole other thing, but like, you know, I did, wore the same prosthetics Nicole Kidman wears on uh, Cold Mountain. She got that nose, right? I had that nose. The difference is she's doing it in an Anthony Mangala movie for Miramax and she wins an Oscar. I do it in the WB and I'm America's prankster, goofball. It's no different. It's just because the tone of the material is dramatic. But the ability is the ability, right? And the look is the look. So she put that nose on, she wins an Oscar. I put the nose on, I'm a clown. So that's number one. I think comedy is highly underrated. Number two, it's harder to do this because that's what this show was. This show was... I'm going to play all these different characters in the real world where you have to fool people and they believe it's real. And if not, you don't get the bit, which you don't get the episode, which you don't have a show. So none like when you do cold mountain, you're playing a character for pretend and everyone on the set knows it's pretend. Do you see why I'm so frustrated this job was a thousand times harder than traditional acting. And only the actors that came on really understand that. Like Jeff Goldblum and David Schwimmer and stuff. And they were beautiful. And they used to tell me all this good stuff. And it's different. But since it's comedy, it gets brushed aside. Oh, that's funny. Goof, goofy. No. I thought the town would look at this show and go, holy fuck. This guy's <laughs> playing imaginary characters. That people believe in the real world, a la Sasha Baron Cohen, a la that other Australian kid. There's a couple of people that do it. That, to me, is real acting. Than just being on a set and playing a character where everyone knows you're playing a character. You stop me when I lie, man. So anyway, I always wanted to play different characters. And I always wanted to see if I could fool somebody into believing I'm a woman. So right now, my first instinct is to try to make this guy believe that I'm a woman and see if he if he likes me. <laughs> now he's already tripping because he's got stuck with the grenade. Now the grenade is not because I'm in transition or anything like that. The grenade is I'm just not as attractive and sexy for him and who he likes. As his guy got. His guy got a dainty little female. And he got me. I mean, it's self-explanatory. But in 2020, people are going to consider this hate comedy. But I don't. it's not. It's just... We have to explain it. So when did you guys get in town? Uh, That's my cousin. And I'm looking at him hard. I'm going to eat his ass up. Okay. Are you excited? Oh, it's been a blast so far. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had the Boilermaker shot? Yeah, totally. That's crazy. Yes. <laughs> Because I know the girl I'm, I'm portraying this. I am really trying to be a woman, okay? I'm trying to be a female. It's funny because... I really am trying to be a woman, like hardcore. My voice, I can't get my voice as high. So, but I sound like this woman, this girl I used to know, and she talked. Uh, now every girl talks like this, but this was like a new way to talk back then. This was early Valley. Hey, I get crazy when I do that. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Party <night. laughs> oh my God, we are so. And Nick, Nick Schwarzenegger has got. Me and Nick would be like, uh, like we would go out there, we would be like at a comedy club or a show, and girls like, oh my god, you're so funny. And Nick would go, ah, ah, ah. So it's like partial Nick. BFF. I wish I did. Best always friends forever. Sex on the beach. What'd you get? Sex on the beach. Oh yeah, sex on the beach. Yeah. Sex on the beach. There's Lori. Yeah. So Lori's acting in it. One of our co-producers that she would come in at the end, and that's the first face you'd see when you got pranked, and you'd sign, and she'd be like, "Hi, how are you? Sorry." That was a trick we learned. 
Why don't you make that a double, sweetie? Ew, you're going crazy. We got a party. Everybody, party! Party. They party hard. Yeah. Party. 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 So I like to do songs. Party, party, party. She goes with it. P-A-R-T-Y. See, now not many actors can do that. That's, to me, this is why Julie is so good, because I would just start making up shit, and she would just go with it. And that's what you have to do when you improv. That's why I hate traditional improv schools. It's like, I need a place and a location. I understand that, and that's a form of improv, and you can do it. But that's not all improv. That's nothing that is, um, that's not the god of end all be all of improv i'm sorry i know that there's a lot of schools that teach that but this is another form of improv and to me it's real improv it's a girl that doesn't not an improver taking it in a live hidden camera situation going with the crazy lead actor who's in a character with real people around and then having to keep up with him and sometimes she takes over and leads the charge that's a different I'm not saying it's any more than the other improv but let's don't be an him there's too many improv snobs and that's this is real training here for you so not in a class not in a class okay I'm not saying that to diss the class but the class thinks it's the end all be all you're not the end all be all this is a different type of improv okay boy I'm feeling myself tonight It's tinkling. So this is the moment where we always leave the marks alone to then get their honest reactions. Just put mine down. That's a dude. That's a dude. That is a dude. I'm a teacher. He's like, that's a, that's a dude, dude. So the joke was to see if he could believe I was a female. And he kept saying, that's a dude. That's a dude, dude. Which is fine. He's fine with it. It's just not his thing. So we now we're busted. And the thing is that he's funny the way he's saying it. That's a dude, dude, dude. That's a dude. That's a dude, dude. And you know that that's a dude. Okay. His boy's like, no, I think it's just, she's dainty. Tell me, you knew about that before you came. Jeez, how would I know? It doesn't matter. How long do you want me to stay here? Please wait it out. Damn, dude, dude. This, that's a dude. Okay. She's <laughs> That's a dude. Please just. <laughs> he goes, she's fucking cool. That's a dude. <laughs> like, even so. <laughs> I can understand why this would get people upset. So I don't even know if I can do this one. But he's just like saying, yo, I'm not feeling it. It's all good. That's not how I rock. That's not how I rock. No, I'm doing this for you. But, dude. <gasps> hey, I love you, dude. I will stay here as long as you want. Okay, that's all I want. Hey, that's don't you dare get up to dance. We're not going to dance. I'll just, we'll just Yeah. But if it does happen. This is crazy. It's awesome. I love it. So where are you girls from? Hometown. You're excuse us. He's a good homie, though. Oh, man. Now he leaves with me. <laughs> I'm on it. He is ass. Oh. Hey, cool. Yeah. You're like laid back. Yeah. Oh, I'm really it's good. Good. About. There's a lot of guys like here, like so stupid, you know? Yeah. Stupid guy. But you're like. So this guy knows that I'm gonna fucking chomp on him. But you're like cool, you know? Like you make eye contact and stuff. Uh, well, yeah. It's I, nice. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. That's. If you, if you can't make uh, I can't eye contact with somebody, then it's really not worth it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, how, are you down for the week? <laughs> we make it so comfortable. The producers were like, just gnaw on that straw and don't say anything and just look at his soul. So, he would say a couple of things. I would just like, 
And producers are like, never break. And I was like, and this guy, he's, he's strong. For the weak part. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I was just chancing out. Chancing out. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no, I don't. All right. I'm single. Are you like swinging single in a double bed? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Actually, you know, I don't know what you just said. I don't know what that means. He's having a nice convo. Guy's sweet. Single in a double bed means you're single, but your bed is double, so you can always, like, rotate. Single in a double bed? Yeah. It means, like, you're single, but, like, there's room for two. Oh, God. He's so cool. No, he's sweet. This is so perfect. We just got here today, and we both met people. <laughs> this is perfect. No, I met mean, those two jerks we met in Cabo. Oh my god. We were just talking that um I base this on like five publicists I know. Uh, uh that's how all publicists are. Like, oh my god. Like, oh my god. Like kinda of know Brian show, like once you but here's the caveat. Okay. We should totally hang out. Totally. Like, hang out. We are we're staying in this awesome um like hotel room. Yeah, it's like zebra floors and we have a hot tub in the room. Hot tub. It's killer. Alright, uh, my producers love that one. It's killer. Awesome. I mean, like, you guys want to go, like, up to our room and stuff? Do, like, tequila or whatever? Whoa, these girls, us, are hitting on them to say, come up to the room and we're going to drink tequila. They're randy for it. This got multi levels to um, it. I'm Judy Kaufman from KZRH, and we're just doing a little piece on uh, spring break. This lady, you're so good. Would you guys uh, be interested in being on camera on the news tonight? She's oh, yeah, a great yeah, problem. Really small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe just getting close together. Can you get your chairs in close together? Turn around. <laughs> See, now it's already funny that we add the extra stuff of like possible embarrassment. Hi, this is Judy Kaufman. KZRH, and we're here on the beach. Hello, Spring Breakers. Hello. Hi. Great. Hello. Have you found any love on the beach? Well, I don't know if I found love, but I found someone who likes to party, and I'm down to party. Anybody want to wave hello to their parents back home? What's happening? <laughs> Hi, Julian. Hi. Hi, Mom and Dad. Can we get, can we get crazy on camera, like Spring Break style? All right. Spring Break style. <laughs> And then I do it. I want to also say to America, it's coming out. I had to do that. It was so perfect because, you know, girls do do that, but we had to blur it out anyway, but I don't think the WB would even allow that to even blur that out. So she did it like that, which was cute. And then I decided to do mine and go all the way and no one would expected it and so i have my chest so it's like okay did he just see it or is it um is it or are they little are they itty bitty committee and that's the thing like what's the difference right like i do that there are you know women that do that this bit is so multi-layered now in 2021 you know you've been we are on a hidden camera show called the Jamie Kennedy Experiment. My is reaction. It's like, wow. It's like this. What can I say? We did this bit. I'm, I'm going to react to a lot of these because it's just a different time. Two things I want to say. There's never any hate in my heart or any people's hearts with connected with this within my show. There's people that do all types of comedy. Some people can be mean in their comedy. Other people fun, goofy. That's not me. I'm not ever, I never am mean. If I do come off mean, uh, I will always take that note and apologize because I never want to be mean. Unless I'm like getting like confrontation with somebody's heckling me or something like that and and they're in the wrong if i'm in the wrong then i have to take my lumps why did we do this bit well because here's what it is it was set within the standard regular normalcy tropes 
of basic stereotypes of of hookup culture. Yo, you got to jump on that grenade for me, bro. I got it. I got a thing here. I'm about to hit this home run. Yo, you got to you got to take one for the team. These are all things that exist. They've existed for my whole existence. They may be considered a certain way now, but that's how they were. People are like, yo, do you, you have a good time last night? He's like, yeah, dude, it fucking was great. How about you? He's like, well, pff, I got in, I got out. I mean, you know, whatever. She's been blowing up my phone, whatever. They, they, women have the same thing when they take some for the team, right? Um, so this isn't about man versus women, gay versus straight, trans versus non. This is about comedy. And so in that straight, white, middle America, male, fratty dude, my character was something that they didn't encounter much. So we were going to give him a little taste of that and get their reactions to see it. And I thought the kid was as sweet as pie. And uh, he didn't go there, but he didn't like negate it. He was just like, okay, cool. He was very respectful. I thought I was respectful. I was funny in the portrayal i wasn't being mean i don't believe you'll tell me in the comments but that's what it is and that's what comedy is is we take things that people expect and then we kind of throw a curveball at it and then the laugh comes at oh that's we thought you were gonna say x but you said y and that's where the laugh comes since the trans community is much more vocal now. I mean, wasn't that they weren't vocal then, but you didn't hear their voices. So now that you can hear their voices much more now, there's a lot of things within the community that they are don't appreciate. I equate the trans community with, with the gamer community. I mean, they take no prisoners. You know what I'm saying? The gamer community is a very, very tough community, and the trans community is very tough too. You know, not as forgiving as I'd like. You know what I mean? This is not a diss. This is like, you know, I did a joke and to, because of that joke, I'm called phobic. It's And it's just not true. But I have to, you know, talk to, with enough trans people and show you that and get your blessing. This is what comedy is. It's funny because it was unexpected. Now, today, this would be much more expected. You may have polyamorous, pansexual, all these different things. Demi Lovato said she wants to hook up with an alien. So this bit might not work today. The older generation will like it because it was unexpected. Today, it is maybe more expected, obviously. But like, and what I'm saying is for people my generation, older, I'm fine. Do whatever you want. I am not anything. I'm not God. And I want to include everybody. And I want people to laugh. And I know that there's people in the trans community that will laugh at this. Um, and I have more jokes like that. I should break them down for you. But in a way, you kind of can say it's very positive because I'm putting out those. I'm talking about them. I was playing characters that were not just straight cis you know, white male. I was trying to mix it up. And it wasn't the butt of the joke. My character wasn't the butt of the joke. The butt of the joke was his reaction to it. And he was actually pretty healthy. And that's okay. But the fact, if we can't talk about things, that's just horrifically unhealthy. I will stand by that. You have to be able to talk about everything. If you can't, it's unhealthy. If you can't joke about things, that's also, I believe, very unhealthy. But people have a different line of where their feelings get hurt. And that's what we have to understand of where the feelings are. And know where the place of origin is of the joke. So that's it. There's no hate in my heart. And I'm open to always discussing. So I'm going to bring all my stuff I'm going to react to. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Because I think that's what we need in this world discussion not dismissal hey guys thanks for watching you know i love doing these you keep watching them i'll keep making them link subscribe comment peace